Hey everybody, it's Sunday, October 1st, and this is Annette, and the Annette's Acre is the channel. Um, it's been a while. I hope you had an awesome end to your summer. Things were kind of hectic here. August seems for some reason to be kind of busy for us. We have birthdays and, and there's usually something that, that comes up to take time. And, um, but thankfully Phoenix is cooling down, which is awesome. I, uh, had a quick business trip to Chicago last week and it was actually warmer in Chicago than it was in Phoenix. So that's a nice change. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> um, I'm going to Raleigh next week for a few days and I'm really hoping we don't have the same situation. So uh, warm on the East Coast is no, not nearly as fun. Um, humidity just kills me. So yes, busy kind of July and August. Um, I've got quite a bit of stuff to show, so we'll, we'll uh, get going here. There's also, you can see behind me, there's some things going on in the room progress has been made lots of stuff moved in lots more stuff that needs to be moved in uh, you're sitting on a brand new kind of sideboard thing that I found at Ikea that's like the perfect height for organizing and and um, obviously filming stuff and just uh, it's just a nice work area uh, but now there's shelves. You can see my file cabinet over here. That's where all my charts are and it's full um, And there's still a whole bunch more that need to go in there. So lots of organization to go and um, But like I said a lot of stuff's been moved in and a lot of stuff a lot more stuff needs to be moved in so But it'll evolve and I'll show you eventually when it's done. So all right, so let's get started. This is a couple just over so it's all of August and all of September. Whoops. Um, and you'll see. I was a little, been a little scattered. Been a little scattered lately. So the first thing I actually worked on last week when I was in Chicago. Uh, and this is Mill Hill uh, Southwest Santa. This is the last of the seven Mill Hill kits that I started in July of last year. This is the last one that I need to finish. And it's killing me. I just, I have the hardest time with this. So I'm, I've almost got the blanket pretty much done. I, I don't know what, what it is about this one. Usually when I get started and I get this far along, I'm like, boom, let's get it done, get it done. But I, it's all I can do to do more than one color. Um, and then not put it down. It's kind of crazy, but I'll take it with me to Raleigh. Um, it's a longer flight, so... Who knows, I might actually take it out on the plane uh, for that trip. So we'll see. It's not really dark October, but, you know, maybe the way I feel about it when I'm stitching on it. <laughs> oh, I guess I should have started with the finishes, huh? Here, let me do that real quick. Three finishes since we last spoke. The first one, and they're all finished finished. First is Mill Hill's uh, White Daisy. I finished it with uh, felt and magnet. This is dimensional. So, yeah. So he was done. He was pretty quick once I got going. So, Mill Hill White Daisy. Sorry, I'm so scattered. This is um, Ship's Manor Beautiful Sea Quaker. Yeah. All finished and framed by the wonderful Nick. So I'm really happy the way it came out. This uses the Ship's Manor threads and it used uh, on fabric that I, um, Joe Mason from Silks For You had dyed previously and I had the stash, so. And then the other one is the big one. And this is the Scott, hmm. Scarlet House, Christmas Tide at Holly House. There we go. Christmas Tide at Holly House. This is done with NBI silks and a couple of um, Belsois on 40 count camo fudge linen from the now defunct Stitches and Spice. I think this would look really good on Ale from Picture This Plus, though. So, so it's done. I finished it in August and then went ahead and had it framed. So 
I will be happily hanging this this year for Christmas. Hopefully. All my, all my stuff hangs all year round. I don't do the whole swap out thing, so it'll go up and it'll stay up. All right, back to whips. Let Freedom Ring, Lila Studio. I got the entire top row of pages complete. That's the whole top row, five pages across the top, and then page six. Now, there are some errors um, in the chart, in the original chart. So I'm gonna put a link, you need to reprint. Um, I think it's page, one of the pages. There's, uh, I'll put the link to Lila's site where it's got the, the page that you need to reprint and replace with what's in your pattern, but I'll put that down in the, in the note, but there it is. It's on just 28 count cream Joblin. That's it. Using all the call for flosses and threads, but it's very happy with the progress. Um, Got a little tired of it, we'll admit. So putting it away for a little while and then it'll come out again. Soon-ish. It'll come out again. Yeah, come out again. Someday. Okay. The other one, I got another quadrant finished on my Tropic of Cancer. Hold on, I gotta make sure I got it right. This is Tropic of Cancer by Ink Circles. This is using the Halloween colorway. Um, I got another page done, I should say, not a quadrant. Um, you can see that one page is actually more than one quarter. So so here's where we're at. I'm thinking in a good week, maybe a week and a half, and I'll have this finished. So I'm, I am going to try to uh, finish this as part of October for dark, Octo dark October. So even though the chart, Tropic of Cancer, isn't particularly dark, it is using the Halloween colorway, which is far more appropriate. That one's gone. The other thing that got some attention, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, very kind of scattered. Could not stay focused. Um, a Sampler Grows, Scarlet House. This was from 2012, a uh, summer schoolhouse. It's an attic uh, retreat weekend. So here's where we go. This is all using NPI silks and 40 count. Um, I had the house pretty much done. I had to fill in the windows. So this is this I did all this down here. Um, I did the flowers at the top. I did the bird up here. He's really, really tiny. You can see here. He's really right there. He looks better. You can see his color. So um, this is like I said, this is on 40 count linen. It will be a pillow. Um, Vana did the original finishing, so I'm hoping to actually send it back to her. Hopefully, you won't mind that, Mama. Finishing another one. <laughs> so, that one, um, both Tropic of Cancer and Sampler Grows are part of Year of Whips. I I've more than met the 50% requirement for a successful Year of Whips. While I do want to get at least two more finishes this year to give me 17 finishes for 2017, if I get those done this year, that's awesome. If I don't, that's okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved myself of the year of whips pressure at this point. <laughs> the other thing that came out to play for a little while was um, Glen, Glen in Place, Glen Pudding. And this is on... 32 count, 32 count, vintage, mystic, vintage storm cloud or something. It's one of the printed ones, so there's, there's the gray cloudy on the front and then that's not on the back, so. So here's where we're at so far. I, um, I actually did, I added in all of this, this time, so. That was just a couple days, which is good, which is good. I'm also working on converting the beads, the four bead colors in this, to 
uh, Delica's. Um, thanks to my best friend, my uh, bestest friend Erin, that sent me samples of the four beads from her kitted up plum pudding. Um, I was able to do some comparisons, and I think I got a good set. We'll see. That's part of the reason that I really wanted to get working on this and get it done, because so, I want to see how the bead choices are going to go. Excuse me. All right. So that's moving along. All right. Now, I also had a couple of new starts, because I felt like it. Um, the first is, this is Busby Designs. This is the Plague Doctor. Yeah, this is that dark Halloween, dark October. I don't know what it is. This is like the perfect dark October, right? So this is the Plague Doctor. Um, and here he is, where I'm at. This is actually the bottom two pages right here. And then this is the next, this is the side page, which goes up to about right here. This is his shoulder, so he only goes up a little further. And this is a, um, a solo from, excuse me, from Silk Weaver one of their um, Facebook solos. I have no idea what color it is. It is a 36 count um, and I'm doing it two over two using just the DMC. Uh, this um, Scott, who's the Busby Designs guy, he actually did, there's two versions of this pattern. There's this version which is just black only um, and then there's another version which has only got half a dozen colors. So um, it's fun. I love it. So he's definitely, uh, my plague doctor is definitely going to get some time in October for Dr. October. So that's another whip. And then the last whip was also a new start. This is a mystery. It is the Lizzie Kate Spirit of Christmas. Uh, mystery sampler for 2017. I all of her three-part mystery of all the three-part mysteries that Lizzie Kate has released, I have completed all but two of them. The first there was a first Christmas one. There was another Halloween one. Now there was a smaller sampler style. It was just a small one. I have all the pieces, but I I never actually finished it. I will. I never actually started it even. Um, and then last year, the spooked one, which I absolutely love, I got all the stuff. I pre-order it as soon as it comes out, and I pre-order the whole package from the online shop that I tend to, the, the online shop that I frequent in Baltimore. And I know I got the stuff in the mail. I remember seeing it. I put it in the safe place. It's so safe, I have no idea where I put it. I have no idea where I put it, really. So part one, including all the fabric, all the floss, everything, embellishment, everything, is MIA in the stash, right? I know exactly where parts two and three are, and I can put my hands right on them, but um, I have no idea what I did with the first part, and to this day, I cannot, I have not found them, even though I have looked through, I mean, I've moved a ton of stash into my room here, a ton, and... I still haven't found it yet, so I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. Unless it's been stuck in with another whip, which then I'll find when we do the whip parade at some point this month, probably. Anyway, this is a mystery. If you don't want to see what the first part looks like, avert your eyes, but I'm going to show it. So here's where I'm at with the first part. I started it on Thursday night after I got home from Chicago, because it of course came in the mail while I was out of town. Um, I've only got a few more words here to put in to finish this flower and then the side borders. So my goal is to finish this today so that I can uh, either go back to Mr. Plague Doctor or to the Ink Circles piece. Either one. I'll work on one of them this week for October. So, so those are other whips. Oh, sorry. This is on the recommended Picture This Plus fabric using the Weeks Dye Works that came with it. So everything is as charted my favorite part is the sea I love the sea can you see it just I just I don't know I love it it's my favorite part <laughs> so so this is active and I will work on this until I finish the first part second part comes out um, 
technically today, which means probably tomorrow. Um, Lord knows when I'll actually get it in the mail, because like I said, it's coming from the Baltimore shop, which is fine. Um, not like I don't have other things to work on in the meantime. Okay, so those are all the whips. Now, I bought a few things. Just a few. Really, just not so bad for two months. Um, one of the things that happened this summer was my daughter got engaged. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. Um, Memorial Day weekend, well, Comic Con weekend, essentially, she got engaged. So, one week, the last weekend in August, we actually went dress shopping for her because the wedding isn't until June of next year, mid June of next year, um, simply, you know, because of availability and uh, they already knew kind of what they wanted from a venue perspective and. Um, and so that's when it is. It's June of next year. So knowing that dress stuff can take a while, I thought, well, let's just go look and see. Uh, Kylie, she had an idea of what she wanted. She's, they're very simple. They're very, my daughter, like me, very practical, very, we're not going to spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on one day. Just not going to do it. Um, so she had an idea of what she wanted from a dress perspective. So I said, all right, let's go look and see what we can find. Um, no wonder, you know, if we find something awesome, if we don't find something, that's fine. We got plenty of time um, for, like I said, June wedding. So last weekend of August, we went dress shopping. It's the first time I had ever done that. Um, I've been married a couple times and I never, I never did the whole try on, you know, the whole say yes to the dress type of dress shopping. I never did that. Just didn't, again, practical. But... I said, hey, let's let's do it. If nothing, if we may not buy anything, we may come up with another alternative that she's just she's happier with, but we'll just go look anyway. So we did. So myself, Kylie, and then her matron of honor, her best friend Jessica, we all went um, up to David's Bridal in Scottsdale. It's, you know, good place as any to start. Um, and she tried on all of four dresses, and this. If you can see this right here, that's her dress. That's her dress. Not only did she find it there, um, the fourth dress she tried on, it she fit in the perfect size, so there was no clips or anything for this particular one. It was exactly she said it was exactly what she had pictured in her in her head of what she wanted. Um, looks great, and it was on sale. So I had a budget because the dress and. And all of that is the one thing, essentially the one thing that we are paying for. I, she didn't ask us to. I told her we were going to. There was no argument. Um, and I'd had a budget in my mind of what I wanted to spend, roughly. Um, for less than a third of that budget, we got the dress, which was on sale. We got a nice um, elbow length veil, which was being discontinued, and that was the last day it was available. And a black um, beaded belt that's going to go on her dress when they do the alterations next year. Also being discontinued and that was the last day it was available. I mean, it was just like this perfect storm for this particular day in August for her to find this dress. So all of those three things together cost me, you know, we're talking less than $500. Less. Which is... I don't know. Maybe I've been watching too many, you know, say yes to the dress. But to me, that was like a screaming deal. <laughs> um, so then the next thing, the attention turned to a sampler, a wedding sampler for them. Uh, I kind of had an idea. This was my first choice. And she immediately said, yes, that's exactly, that's perfect. I know my kid. Um, so this is Stitch Rovia's Wedding Love Sampler. So, simple, very graphic. I just, I really like it. Um, her colors are red, white, and black for the wedding. So I called my friend Joe, well, messaged my friend Joe uh, from Silks For You and asked her if she would dye me some red, fl some red silk for the sampler, and she did. And so, here they are, three shades of red. And that'll be used for the sampler. And then I'm going to get, I'll get some black, 
some black silk, probably either dinky dyes. I'll see what I've got in my stash. I'm pretty sure I have some old dinky dyes. Um, black in my stash, so. So I've got that, and then I'll just use like a white 36 or 40 count linen. Again, I'm sure I have a piece of appropriate size in the stash. And this will be a January start. I don't think it's gonna take that long. Like I said, the wedding's not until June, so it's good. Um, but yeah, so wedding, and here's, like I said, that's the dress. That's the dress. When we'd ordered it, they said, oh, it'll take a couple months before it'll get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got a call two weeks later. Your dress is here. Okay. So we went and got it. And there it will hang until, um, until next April when she'll take it in for just a little, it'll probably need a little adjustment in the, uh, bodice area, but that's it. So. Other things that came in, my, uh, color, color and cotton glosses. I really like these, the color and cotton stuff. She does a really good job. Um, I'm also part of the Just Another Button Company, Button Lovers. This is Button Lovers 2. And as you can imagine, this month was frightful and delightful. So I got, she, they send orange, orangey buttons, big orange buttons, and baby orange buttons, and baby black buttons, and scary buttons. Aren't those cute? So, Button Lovers Club 2.0, it's awesome, I love it. I love my little package every month. This comes like this. Fun. I did the first full year, so I have a whole rainbow of buttons now in JABC from the first Button Lovers Club. Um, the other thing I found was, thanks to Allie and her recent um, Debbie Patrick uh, spree, I bought the Winchester Mystery House church and the Golden Gate Park Conservatory, San Francisco. Now, my first thought was, these are not current patterns. Surely I need to go to eBay or something. So I went looking on eBay. I could not find this guy at all on eBay. It was just not, there was no listing whatsoever. Um, so I was like, wow, gosh, so, you know, I put the search and, you know, the save search. And you know, I was like, well, we'll see how long it takes. And then I just kept poking around, poking around. You can actually buy these still direct from Debbie Patrick. So that's what I did. That's what I did. Um, I think they were $5.95 or $6.95 a piece. You have to buy two, um, just from a shipping perspective. They want you to spend at least $10, which is just two charts. Like, okay, that was not... The hardest part was figuring out what my second chart was going to be, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, but you can get these direct from her, no problem whatsoever. I had them within a few days, um, no issue at all. So. I'll put that link um, in the notes as well, so that if you too want to stitch the Winchester Mystery House, you can. The pattern is readily available, readily available. So, straight from the designer. Um, let's see. My mother did a kind of three-week road trip, epic road trip. Her and her dog Abby, um, from Phoenix to Albuquerque to Nebraska to Missouri. She actually visited the Missouri uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company in Hamilton, Missouri. Um, and then up to Michigan where I still have, uh, we still have a lot of family. And as part of the trip, she stopped at House of Stitches in Indiana and she brought me Formidable Frank. So, he's fun. He's fun. He's all all DMC. So no bees, which I can imagine. Frank doesn't seem to be a very blingy guy like I, but um, yeah. So she brought that for me because she knows my love of Halloween and she's encourages it wherever possible. Uh, I also got the um, Christmas ornament issue. You can see I've only tagged like five things in here that I would even consider working on. So. 
There have been previous years where I've got, you know, you can't hardly, there's not a page without a tag, but not so much this year. Um, I also got the, I was part of the Kickstarter, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, for the new X-Stitch, X-Stitch, uh, Mr. Cross Stitches uh, magazine, so I got that. I don't think I'm going to subscribe at this point. Not that it isn't a great magazine and it's got awesome stuff in it. It's just that I have so much. I have so much. Um, I have so much already, so I'm just gonna wait and see. Obviously, if there's a design that I really enjoy, I really like, or something, then I'll then I'll buy an individual copy. But for now, I'm not gonna. I'm glad I helped him get moving, but other people are gonna have to take it from here. <laughs> um, the last thing that I got back in July was my um, picture disc plus. Now, I did not participate in the Picture This Plus Christmas in July sale on July 25th due to Stitch from Strash. Well, and the fact that I already got more fabric, I could cover the world. Um, but again, my the online shop that I shop at, Needlecraft Corner in Baltimore, does an anniversary sale in June and also offers 25% off Picture This Plus fabrics as part of the anniversary sale. Then the orders get combined at the end of June and get sent over to Picture This Plus on July 1st. So these orders go in long before the Christmas and July orders go in, which means we get them back faster. The only caveat being is that the smallest you can order at that point is a fat quarter. You can't do fat eights, which is fine. Those are fine. So I ordered three pieces this year. Um, only one has a potential, has a thought associated with it. Um, so this is Haven, which is a beautiful, oh, that's perfect right there, which is a beautiful blue, pale blue. Um, Alchemy, which I was thinking actually, um, it's gray, it doesn't have that, it's, it's definitely gray. I'm thinking potentially uh, Bewitching Pixies, who knows. Um, I have them all, I haven't stitched any of them, but I have them all. And then this is Quartz which is a beautiful kind of pinky, pinky peachy color. The Marion Bright um, Sal from December of last year from Clouds Factory, uh, Marion Bright, I, so I've shown it previously, Marion Bright. Um, it uses a row, it used this quartz fabric in an opalescent for that particular piece. And I really like the color, really like the color. For one of the Brooks Books Princess Couture collections, um, of course her name escapes me right now, but she's got a beautiful red kimono and she's done, the, the model's done on red fabric. I was thinking this maybe, we'll see. Uh, I'm slowly, I've got all the specialty fibers for each of the princesses. Uh, I haven't pulled floss or anything. I only have Snow White started, so we'll see. Though I have to say, have you seen Ariel? Oh my God. Ariel is amazing. It just came out. I love it. Love it. Um, anyway, I was thinking quartz, but we'll see. So, that's, that's it. That's all, really, um, from the stash. Oh, no, I'll take that back. I'm working. I won a $500 Amazon gift card back in May when I attended a conference, and so I had, I had about $50, $60 left on it. So I blew it up and added to my Mill Hill collection. One of these days I'll do a video of just my Mill Hill collection. It'll probably take an hour. Autumn Harvest, be scary. Christmas Palm, of course, hello, palm tree. Ice Castle, I love this. Uh, the white will kill me, but I love this. Holiday flip flops. Snow globe. I think. Oh. Thought I quit recording and I was going to have a small panic attack. Um, and then the last one that I got, as you will probably figure out the reason, bridal shop. This is the one I went looking for. So. 
So that cleared out the last of my $500 gift card from uh, Amazon. So, so that's that's all the whips. That's all the stash. That's all the finishes. And the last thing to talk about is the last thing to talk about. We're gonna pass the stash. So this is the Scarlet House um, Christmas Night at Holly House that I showed earlier. It's a it's a wonderful pattern. Um, it does. I did it in the NPIs, but it also has a DMC conversion on it. You can see. Um, I I think it would be awesome to find the overdye the bell swall overdye that I had did not have as much variegation as what is in is what was used for uh, what Tanya used for the model, but I there are so many overdyes and stuff out there now that you could find something really good for the bricks, for the house. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do pass the stash for this particular chart. So in the comment below, if you would like to stitch a house, a big old house for Christmas uh, and some reindeer and some cool reindeer and, you know, the fun stuff on here. Um, tell me how many Christmas presents that you have bought so far this year. You have, are, you, are you getting excited for Christmas? Have you bought any? How many presents have you bought so far? I have one. Which is one more than I usually have at this time of year. So I think I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it open until the 1st of November. And then I'll do a draw um, for folks. But yeah, tell me how many how many Christmas presents have you bought. And that will tell me that you want to stitch this particular chart. And I will uh, I will do the draw then on the 1st of, no 1st of November-ish time frame. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think that's a Wednesday. But that's okay. So it'll be fine. Other than that, um, I'm really close to having all my whips in one spot so that I can do a whip parade. Uh, I'm actually hoping to do it in two or three chunks this this month, and then um, depending on how long it is, I might you know put them together or do as Sherry did and just post various video post post a couple different videos. I found about just over 60. So I don't have as many as she does, um, but I, it's still quite a few and it's definitely gonna be longer than an hour. So I might actually break it down and do it in two chunks. It, I have them in two large plastic bins over here. So it may just be, you know, one video per bin, but we'll see. Um, I'm kind of excited. I'm sure that I'm gonna have, the whole thing will be, oh, not that I forgot that I started it, cause I can, I remember everything I started. It's just that I forgot how much I loved it or I really want to get back to this or, oh my God, I thought I had more done than that, which is I'm sure going to be the theme, <laughs> just like we're seeing on all the others, so. But anyway, so that's coming soon. Look for that during the month of October. Um, otherwise, that's it for today. And uh, hope you have an awesome day and uh, keep stitching.